Hello and welcome to Chinwag. I'm Paul Giamatti. And I'm Stephen Asma. Today's episode is the Q&A section from our live taping in Portland. Here it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel like maybe we can do a Q&A. Should we take some questions, We'd people? We'd like to do that. If people like to do that, if people want to do that. We have a microphone don't have over to. here in the... Uh, Nobody should feel obligated in this to ask area a question here, or so do anything. So some brave soul steps uh -oh, up. here we go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Uh -oh. Portland. Oh, my God. My Good God, heavens. they're all lining up. Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> all righty. Hi there. All right, hit us. So, um... I am wondering two things. So you just seem to be talking about um, the uh, accumulation of anomalies uh, in like a, the scientific framework. Yeah. So I would be curious to know more about uh, what you both think um, about that. And then also, I am I am kind of a UFO person, so I feel the need oh. to let you both uh -oh. know. Here we go. Uh oh, here we go. Ah, here we go. <laughs> but uh, the annual festival um, for UFO stuff is currently happening in uh, McMinnville, mm -hmm. Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, and I uh, personally know the like two people who. Uh, I don't know, in the past have been like the MUFON people, mm -hmm. the Mutual UFO Network. So there are people worth knowing and McMinnville is a lovely place. So nice. yeah, <laughs> if you have time, <laughs> I would highly recommend it. Uh, but in that context, <laughs> I, I'm wondering if either of you have uh, read John Mack's um, Passport to the Cosmos. Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and I would love to hear you talk about your Great. experience okay. with that text. Just, just small Sorry. questions. With not, yeah, yeah. Very, very uh, easily addressed, both of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, fair. we should point out, we did do a really fun chinwag, two-parter with uh, sort of a big wig in the MUFON uh, That's community. That's true, yeah. Um, Colorado, Colorado yeah, Col MUFON. Yeah, so please go yep. and check that out. We also yeah. did a t the thing that hasn't been on yet, which is we talked to the news editor of something called the 40 in Times, which you talk about accumulation of anomalies. Yeah. And, and sort of a scientific framework. And that's kind of what this magazine about, and that's what sort of being a, what's called a Fortean is about. Blended. I think that the, the Fortean idea that Paul mentioned is you're not really a believer or a skeptic. You're somewhere in between, like on the fence in a way. And that is like keeping an open mind about these anomalies. And that's, that is definitely what we're trying to do with the chin wag is yeah. just stay in that zone. I like can. that zone of unexplained yeah. and un, it's more, it's more uncanny yeah. feeling to me. I have read John Mack's book. I read it a long time ago. I read both. John Mack was a Harvard psychiatrist who began studying the phenomenon of alien abduction. And he listened to experiences. Yes. And he did. And he paid, he treated it seriously and he treated it as a genuine phenomenon, mm -hmm. although he was, he, he could never quite decide whether it was a real thing or or a psychological thing happening and in either case he was it was important to him yeah in either case he thought this is yes, an important thing way. that's happening yeah. and and i i'm all for that because it's like either way whatever's going on either way it's a super interesting thing yeah yeah even if but it's a great not, book he even if it's not guy. an actual abduction there's something very important important happening yeah. i can remember i was in i was in um uh, it was sort of a gospel choir when I was in college, and I remember we were playing gospel music, wow. and people would go would start speaking in tongues, and I'm generally a skeptical kind of person, and so it was not clear to me that they were that the Holy Spirit was speaking through them. I tended to be doubtful about that, but something serious was happening. Something was happening, yeah. and that's fascinating alone. But yeah, yeah. who do we got next? Thank you. Uh, sure, might go sideways a little bit. Um, first is. Uh, What's the most primitive uh, mythological creature known to have been cave painted or? Uh -huh. you I, know. Know. I know, I know, me. Holy that. shit, really? <laughs> do you? I think I do. Go ahead. I think it's the Lion Man, which is actually a little figurine. Somebody's with me. Uh huh. Um, it's, it's like a little clay figure. It's like a, it's it's a it's a little carved figure, and it appears to be a human, but it has sort of like um, a lion's head. Wow! And it's like the first real mashup. Fascinating. Yeah. And what? how old is that? It's probably th between thirty and forty thousand years old. Ooh, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Oh, it's really crazy. Cool. And yeah. where was it found? Do we know? In Germany, in a cave in Germany. Okay. 
Fascinating. Yeah, okay. Yeah, now, what's it, you have a second part? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is why I, I, I travel around with him. <laughs> Because I don't know shit, but he knows everything. Thank you for that. Right. Thank you. Uh, this might go even more sideways than so. Uh, there is no sideways here. Yeah, not in here. the chin way. There's right. no. Yeah, there's no sideways here. Well, for you, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 I. <laughs> so, uh, Freudian or or a psychological, uh, you, psychologically. Well, okay. So uh, maybe men were a uh, cavemen were afraid of their desire to have sex with beasts or that uh, their, you know, their... Okay, this their, is going Where are you going with this, man? <laughs> where, where, where are we going with this, man? <laughs> I, I told you it might go sideways. I don't, no, that's okay. Maybe I don't it's know a, if I call this sideways maybe, that we're maybe, going, but... It, it, maybe it was an anxiety, right? And, and so right. apparently uh, men were... Uh, you know, of, of afraid of chimera or hybrids or something like that, and and but women were more accommodating, and men were maybe more afraid of or having to huh. remedy or uh, you know. Uh, uh, Do you think in some way these things were the like a kind of literalization of a taboo to keep you from having sex with an animal? Oh, okay. Seriously? Oh, no, that's yeah, very. Yeah, was it some sort of you, thing you, that you, established? You I, I don't know if that's what you're asking me. Something like that. Okay. So, okay like a eunuch, unicorn. Coincidence? What? Oh. Castration Unicorn. anxiety? I think it's a okay. coincidence, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think like, that's a coincidence. coincidence? Paul's like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. I don't no. think they're remotely related, <laughs> those words. <laughs> I'm no etymologist, <laughs> an etymologist, but no linguist, but I don't think they're related. Okay. Yes, sir. No, yes, I want to defend my man here slightly, Thank which you. is there. there I don't deserve it, but I <laughs> but there, there could, if you do do a psychoanalytic view of this shit, um, you could be like, you could be like, well, what is this about? And if you were a Freudian, maybe even a Jungian, you might be like, well, there's something phallic about a unicorn. Sure, yeah. And sure. that's all I got. Next no, question. No, before that, like, <laughs> what, I, I mean, you're, you're a caveman in a cave, and... Uh, yes, I'm you need to stop you right now. You're lonely, okay, okay. and you need, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, though, sir, for the... <laughs> yep, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next, next. <laughs> how, do, how do you go after that one? Yeah, I know. Yeah. How do you follow the bestiality question? <laughs> I could do it. I, I love, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you could. <laughs> I love you both, by the way. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, thank Woo! you. Thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask a question. I really like the dragon uh, talk about, you know, east versus west. Yeah. So I was curious, Stephen, about uh, your any other knowledge you had. Because as I understand it, you know, the Scythian culture, uh, steppe nomads, yeah. you know, went from east to west uh, into Europe and into East Asia with their beliefs. A lot of, ana you know, animalist type uh, effects. Yeah, uh, and I was curious if you knew anything more about the use of dragons in Europe during the medieval times, because uh, I believe the Alans, uh, Iranian tribe, uh, did kind of transmit that into European culture. I I, I wish I could say something I know, definitive. I wish I knew a lot about more about yeah, dragons. But I, we should do a dragon. But I do sometime. think you're right. I would love that. A lot of cultural transmission, and we sure. Yeah. So is it is it is it an older is it an older trope in the East than it was in the well, West? Yes. Good yeah, question. I think it is. Right? Question. Yeah, it yeah. must be. Yeah. Probably. I think it is. seems but, like it must have been. But but there are, you know, predecessors to the dragon in the form of the Hydra in the, in the so. West. Yeah, so that's if you sort look of at like, yeah. the ancients, yeah. Do they fight any kind of huge serpent or anything in any of those? Well, Hercules early? fights the Hydra. As, that's true, yeah. Uh, the Hydra uh, seems a little different to me than a dragon, but well, not to split hairs, yeah. Steve, but the Hydra well, seems I mean, different it to looks me. Like a dra to me, it looks yeah. like a dragon with yeah. seven heads. Yeah. You know? yeah, is it seven? Isn't it seven heads on the Hydra? I don't know. Does it only have seven heads? A, a, a multitude. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. kill one, you make two. Well, the one in the Bible, I think, might be seven-headed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's right. The but, beast. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my only point, I'll, I'll shut up, but the uh, King Arthur's myth uh, with the sword and the stone, mm -hmm. with the dragon uh, right banner, right? Uh, supposedly that's uh, taken from Al Alania. Oh, so I was just curious because they're, uh, you know, like I said, uh, East West tribe. So we to, we're going to do some research on we'll this. Do, thank yeah, you. No, we'll do yeah. a whole episode. Next one. About it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, do love you guys. Episode. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank absolutely. You. Yeah. Thanks. That'd be great. Actually, That's cool, I don't yeah. really know enough about it's a very good it at all. Question. 
I don't know anything about anything, but I definitely don't know about dragons. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? Good, um, fantastic. I was just wondering, any, any conjecture on uh, what future myths might look like uh, from what's oh. going on today? What or, things will turn yeah. into? That's like, very what interesting kinds of question. That is interesting. Yeah. What things will transmute into? It's hard to know. Like, what do we look at now that where there's sort of myth being formed? What's that? Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I think it might. It could be that there's. Um, if you look at what people have a lot of anxiety about, that tells you, I think, about what the mythology is going to be. And we have a lot of anxiety around artificial intelligence, That's true, cyborg right. futures. Right. So there could be mythologies about that that are emerging. Or it'll pick up the old things about sort of, you know, all the kind of Pygmalion and stuff like that. Yeah. The creation being something that you... By the way, I, actually, another thing that when I was reading about Crete that's really cool is this figure of Talos, oh. which is an artificial man. It's the earliest example of a robot, it's cool. basically. Really and cool. He's, and he's animated by a fluid in his body. Oh, really? And I don't know if it's Daedalus or who it is that made him, but the way to defeat him is you pierce, I think it's Jason, pierces his ankle and the, and the, the, the Ike, fluid the runs stuff out. flows out of him. Wow, that's but it's awesome. cool that there's a kind of like, there's a mechanical man. Like an autom yeah, automaton that really or something really cool. from that period. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, Go. So I had the thought oh boy. about <laughs> oh while boy. I was present here, I have a two parter, okay. unrelated two parter, uh -huh. where, you know, eunuchs are a thing. Unicorn. Unix. Yeah. Uh -huh. Unicorns. Are a thing. I'm telling you, they're not. No, I know, no, they're not. <laughs> but you mentioned the whole like virgin relation to okay. unicorns. Got it. And I don't know anything about anything, uh -huh. admitting to everybody in this room. Uh, but <laughs> well, it you get a like, two part question. Yeah, that was very interesting. <laughs> Just the thought to me about like the the concept of eunuch and the concept of unicorn being related to virgin and how they could be related or connected. But and anything not. that has one horn could be a unicorn. Okay. But not a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Technically, so I get that. Part two. I think they're completely different. They are, and I agree. One is a Greek root. One is a one is a Latin. I root, absolutely one agree. One is a horse. One I is was, a guy. I'm just saying. None over of it's the, related. Over in the corner, y'all talk about unicorns, unihorns. Oh it God. all kind of makes sense. Okay. Okay. But I'm a big fan of how things sound phonetically. Got it. Okay. okay. So Clearly. when, when the, <laughs> the the concept of Minotaur and Minotaur were brought up. Yes. But it was King Minos, not King Minos. Yes. I was curious about your opinion I on that. I think what Minotaur means is bull of Minos. Yeah. Is okay. what it means. Tor, yeah. It doesn't okay. have anything to do with sort yeah. of, it, it means yeah. the bull of Minos yeah. okay. is what it means. We're clear on Minotaur, <laughs> right? No, no, Minotaur is fine, but Minotaur sounds better, <laughs> sounds better than Minotaur. Minotaur, yes, it does. Exactly. Uh, why that happens, I don't know. Ex see, that's just no, that's how a really the, good... the ear works. Gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> I, I see where you went. I, I just see wanted you to went. clarify I with everyone in the room I got the it. phonetics and how things sound yes, matter. Yes, I got it. No, no, I got it. Minotaur. I'm with you. I got it. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. But here's an interesting thing, though, a, a thing that I didn't yeah, get to, to put out about the Minotaur. And that is that there's a funny that that Dante, uh, and I think it happened with a lot of people in the Middle Ages, but when Dante wrote his, uh, you know, the Inferno, the yeah. first part of the Divine Comedy, there was a, a, I think, a common misperception of what the Minotaur was through a mistranslation of something that Ovid wrote. Oh, and like the so that what the, he depicts the Minotaur not as a human with the head of a bull. <laughs> he predicts it. He depicts it as the body of a bull with a human <laughs> head. <laughs> that must look great. That's so that's stupid something. looking, isn't it? If you think about that, you're like, <laughs> that's if more, that had been what it was, it wouldn't have worked. That's more frightening. That's more horrifying. You think that's more yes, horrifying? I think dude's head so stupid. Oh my god. No, I I think that would look ridiculous. No, that would scare the shit out of me. Really? Yes. Just a stupid little head on the big That's body? Screaming as it runs at you? My no. God, no. I don't find that scary at all. I would just be like, that is stupid. You look stupid, sir. I would not be frightened of that at all. That would just look idiotic. That's okay, a, here we go. Here we go, the Cubs. Chicago Cubs. All right. All righty. Uh, so... This whole time, I just kept thinking of, of my closest analog being a, um, a Gen X guy 
mm-hmm. was the old Dungeons and Dragons monster manuals. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. if you guys ever are familiar with those, or that was, I was fascinated by, with those by, as, sure. a, as a yeah. kid. Did you play it? I did a little bit, but I liked reading the books more. Yeah. yeah. To tell you the truth. Yeah, so. I actually, I never played it, but I liked looking at the books. Me too. Yeah, so yeah. I just kept thinking of, you know, kept flashing back to those, nice. those manuals and reading those. Those were great. Those, yeah, all the, the different monsters, monsters in them. Yeah. So great. Oh, yeah. That was all great. I had. Well, I, Thanks, man. That's, that's, a, yeah, good, that's a good point. No, those I, were great, those yeah. things. I just add to what you're saying, too, is that, like, a lot of this stuff we're talking about got resuscitated by by like the gamers in Dungeons and yes. Dragons, but also the, the comic books, like, you know, Stan Lee, Jack, the EC Comics, uh, all of the comics, they, they are remarkably rich in mythology. And then they've... And the then, new now mythology, got, though, kind of drawing on things. Right. And, they're yeah. reinventing it, and then Harry right. Potter reinvents it. it. It never goes away. It no, just keeps no, that stuff ever goes thing. away. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks, man. Thank you. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. So, excluding the D and D guy, uh-huh. how high are y'all? <laughs> why did you exclude Wait, him? Why exclude yeah. him? He seemed perfectly coherent. He seemed completely oh, rational. Then. Okay. Perfectly. He seemed clean. Yeah. He seemed okay. clear to you. Crisp. It's an interesting. How yeah. high are you, <laughs> sir? No, not at all. Dead made a couple of IPAs. Uh, in. Out of your fucking mind, I'm, aren't I'm you? Por- I'm Portland. Yeah, you know. Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know how it is. Are we talking weed? Are we talking mushrooms? What's no, just IPA. You know, just an IPA. Well, that's Portland, fantastic. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was it. That but, was it? Okay, no. It. Yeah. But no, recently I'm not high right no, now. No, I'm going to no, squeeze like, an important yeah. insight out of this question, which Great, is... Good. I like this. You, you, this um, is a real teacher. Here. Go you for can it. get something out of that. You, yeah, I'm going to watch this. Okay. Yeah. You're bringing up something that is important to all this, which is uh, intoxication, ecstasy. And it, a lot of this stuff is involved in, yeah. if you think about mythology sure. and the whole tradition, there's usually some kind of intoxicants or altered sure. states of consciousness. I suppose that that's true. Activates See? the imagination <laughs> yeah. and it plays a large role in this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it allows for a free flow of yeah. thought. Yeah, exactly. that's what it does. Yes, it, does. It, 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 it um, inhibits your inhibitions. Yes. Yeah. We'll take one more. We'll take one more. Yeah, 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 Are we yeah. supposed to get out of here? Is that no, 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 no. We heard from no, you. You already, already asked one. You already asked we one. We heard from. Yeah. You gotta let this guy. All right, this yeah. is gonna be the last question. This better be good. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I was curious about your thoughts regarding what it means about our individual minds coming together to believe something so fully, like what it says about how our consciousness works together when we get group, group think going on. That's something that's we're cool. definitely interested in yeah. a lot here. It's a good yeah. question. That's something we talk about a lot, yeah. is this kind of collective imagination and collective agreement on things. Professor, take it away. No, I was just thinking, I was just thinking, I hope Paul fields this question. <laughs> I'm just an actor. I'm in show business. Uh, I mean, one thing is that um, the mind is not stuck in the in the skull or in the head. It's sort of distributed in the environment a little bit, like your mind, my mind. Yeah, I'm not, I don't mean that in some really like spooky an ether way or something. No, like a kind I mean, of we're in a sort of I a, mean, an, an element of context. context. <laughs> like like, like yeah. a, through through our language and communication. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh-huh. So the mind is extended. This is what it's called officially is there's a kind of uh, extension of the mind in language, in symbols, in images, in our phones, in our tech, in right. writing. Yeah. And so there's a kind of like infection that this is going to, you know, that we're giving each other well, about ideas. Isn't that the original meaning of a meme, though? Yes, uh, yeah, that's right? Richard Dawkins' no, it is. idea. Yeah, that's it really the original is. idea of a meme. Yeah, like it's a, a kind of psychological spreads. infection, sort of, right? Shared and passed on. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's one way to think of it. The more mystical way is that tulpa theory that we've talked about before. Right, yeah. David uh, Lynch. <laughs> is he? Is he here? <laughs> <laughs> He's here. David Lynch. David there Lynch is. just came in. There he is. He just came. Oh, there he's leaving. <laughs> Drive safe, David. Um, <laughs> uh, I keep going, Professor. Um, uh, well, I don't have much on this, but there is, is a Tulpa theory. Thing? Is that David Lynch? Does he talk about that? There's a theory that you, ah, when we uh, imagine something together... Um, and we concentrate on it, it can actually bring it into existence in the physical it. world. Right. And that's a kind of a, a more mystical 
uh, way of, it comes out of the Tibetan tradition, but it's not a dominant view in Tibet, but it's a sort of minority view in Tibet that you can just by meditating and concentrating, cr create a creature. You create a kind of personal a ghost deity of, sort yeah. of, like sort of personal can, sort of, yeah, thing to relate to. Yeah. Yeah. But Fascinating. That's, that's harder. Season three. And so consult season three. <laughs> well, th thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. And thanks to David Lynch for showing up. Thank you. Chinwag is a production of Tree Fort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Tree Fort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Original theme music by Luke Topp, with additional music by Via Mardot. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Audio production supervision by Jared Brom and Matt Dyson. Editing and mixing by Jeff Neal. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Research assistance by Aiden Brooks. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm. And find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. <laughs>